So I guess we're ready. Uh, Emily, hello. Uh, okay. And welcome to this other episode of YDH Chats. Uh, as you know, I've been doing this for a little bit now. Came from an idea of like meeting some winners from the past. Uh, and you are a winner from 2018 uh, with a film that made a big bang for a lot of reasons. Uh, we will get to that. Uh, that said, I am very happy that you accepted because um, on one side, I'm a big fan. And I think on the other, it's actually very interesting to maybe see your perspective on what was before or and what was after the YDA for you as a director. But before we go through that, uh, since directors like to be on the other side of the camera, Yes. And you're in front of it right now. Um, be conscious of the fact that I'm going to be nice to you. Yes. Number one. That's good. <laughs> Number two, um, uh, let's start with things that are maybe a little easier. Um, not that it's going to be difficult, but easy as in what is your background? Uh, who, did you grow up in a creative family? I mean, a, your background as a director. I mean, you became a director through what? route yeah that's a good question mm, i think i think all families are creative in their own ways i think there's a lot yeah. of ways to be creative in but my parents didn't uh, you know they are daughter and my dad is like a political science they were working for ministries here in denmark yep. they're very academic yes um but my grandmother she was a uh, interior designer and uh, very artistic so yep. I've always been um, working, you no know, drawing, and like being introduced to art and film and architecture through my parents. Because even though they were super academic, they were also very interested in cultures in many different ways. So ever since yeah. I was a small kid, when we were traveling or just even what we were doing at home, would be always surrounding around culture in some way. So yeah. no, they weren't creative in a typical sen sense, but they were exposing me for a lot of things. That is but, creative, you could say. But did that did that 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 was because I guess they were curious. I mean, there's something very uh, creative in curiosity, in a court, as far as I'm concerned, right? So curiosity is part of creativity. You have to be curious to change something or think of something or not be happy with something and trying to find a solution to whatever um, brings you to a solution, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I think curiosity in having you be curious about different cultures and different places and different worlds and different histories, I think was part of their way of teasing you into creativity, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And <laughs> as, as I grew older, I started to learn that maybe both my mom and dad would have loved to do something that was more creative, yeah. uh, but yep. they maybe didn't really have the the fate in themselves to do it. So it was more safe in a way to uh, go the more academic way. So you 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 actually went to like an art school, like ar uh, architecture on arts, right? Is that is that what you're gra you graduated in, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so so did, what they let you do that. I mean, they never wanted you to actually find yourself a career that was different. Uh, than than the one that you wanted, right? They actually let you go through what you actually liked, right? Yeah, uh, you could you could say that. But the funny thing is, uh, I wanted to do film since I was quite small, I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I don't think I ever had the courage to do it. And when I was yeah. nineteen and had to pick my route, somehow I. I filled out an application to the architecture school but I, and art school, but I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do it. And I was still living at home and the application was lying around in the house. And then one day my mom came and said, oh, I got so stressed that it was just lying around. So I, I, I biked no. and delivered it. So I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I wasn't even sure. I mean, I love drawing and I was really interested in like architecture. That's great. And stuff, but so she did that and I went traveling and then I came home and she met me in the airport with a big envelope and she was like, you got it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, because yeah. I, I wanted to be I, because I wanted to be a director, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm gonna ask you a question later about this, but 
when I was very young, I was like 14 years old, right? I, I went to see a movie. Mm -hmm. And then after that movie, I said, that's what I want to do in life. And my parents are both architects, ah. right? So I actually grew up in a family of architects. And my grandfather was an architect. So, But my parents didn't really want me to not do architecture. No. Right? So when I wanted to become a film director, they were like, you know, you don't want to really be a director. You know, it's <laughs> better if you do something else. Because it, it, they were trying to not have me get stuck in a world that might hurt me quote unquote right yeah um so but when i made when i applied to schools the school that i got in was the only school that had a film school so fate kind of brought me there right so my parents took me to the school i was studying communications and then when my parents left <laughs> I, I, I changed my major i became That's a film major I became my film major and I told them three years later. So I kind of went through a different route to actually get to and, and I never became a director at the end. I I no. I, I became a producer. So it, it's I interesting still like how <laughs> and not yeah, still film. No, 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 yeah. still yeah. film and, and still the love of you know finding talent or or talking to people that I actually respect and, and, and all that, which is interesting because the route that you go through is very different depending on right so yeah so that said did was there a moment when you because you said that you actually wanted to be a director from very young mm -hmm. right was there a moment in which that happened was there a moment where you said oh that i saw that thing i want to be a director or somebody told me about film directing that's the career i want to have i mean yeah. how do you how did you fall in love with it? I think my dad exposed me to like all these French New Wave films like Godard and Truffaut and all these things mm -hmm. and Ingmar Bergman. I saw all these things yeah. when I was quite young because my dad was yeah. really like into that. And mm -hmm. I guess I was just like, I just fall in love with it. It's like real romantic, but I think it was yeah. like a way, it's always been my escape in literature as well, but definitely in film, it's, it was an escape from everything else and it was yep. I was just I loved it I loved colors music uh, like it was just yeah it's amazing no it's like it's it's one of the most incredible arts because it has all those arts in it exactly you said literature right and literature is inside film mm -hmm. right you know sculpture is inside film and arts you know visual arts are inside film and yeah and 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 it's incredible when you actually live it like that when you live it so emotionally you know um so okay. so you actually go to film school and you become a you know you kind of get out of it and in theory at that point you're a director right mm -hmm. uh, is there a type of director that you want to be knowing that a you're very young but you have an amazing uh, uh portfolio right uh of, of life experiences until now <laughs> The directors have a, a, a type. Do you feel like you're a typology of director? I mean, do you think you want to do a certain type of things and you can't do a certain other, or do you think you're one of those directors that can try a lot of things, and you can and you want to try a lot of a lot of things? Mm -hmm. do, 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 um, do you do you? Do you it's a good question. One or the other. About the. French New Wave and all these like old school auteurs way of working is something that I admire a lot that when you watch a film you have no doubt who did it. I think that it's it's yep. it's and it takes you really need to believe in yourself and believe in your own vision and really go for it and then you can get this like a develop a language that's very much yours. I think that's amazing. Yep. But knowing myself yep. good enough by now is that I'm a very curious person and yep. I've been I got my first job when I was 12 and I've been working so many different places and as I said I took a whole master degree in architecture and art and yes. worked a lot in that and then got into film and knowing that by now is that I will probably try to do a lot of different things. Yep. Um but for example you don't I mean you can you can't judge it. Um I mean you can but I mean r right now you can't really like um be objective about it because you did it but when i look at your work even when you go on the bacon reel and you look at the the the, the your filmography let's put it that way on the, on your in advertising 
it does have a look that is yours. <laughs> Do you feel like you have a look that is yours? Because I feel like you, ha you have a look that is yours. <laughs> because it is very clearly very emotional. You have a very in interesting way of uh, looking at the world, um, moving the camera, uh, moving the camera close or away, depending on what you want to say, uh, hand holding it or not, uh, casting, obviously, very hugely important. And then there's this thread of your love for, let's say, women's issues, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which actually brought you to the YDA with period. But um, um... Do, you, do you think film has to always have very profound... I mean, do you want to do films that always have very profound meanings and very important values that you want to give bring, bring across? It's difficult, huh? That's, I don't think it, film has to have that. Right. Um, not at all. I think it's um, uh, I think it's amazing that there are so many different voices out there, yep. and there are so many different ways of telling stories. But I mm -hmm. think for me. I'm a very sensitive soul. I'm like a sponge. I just, you know, take everything in. And there's yeah. so much in this world that it can really make me sad and disappointed. And I've always been the one like um, fighting a cause of something. So I think yeah. it will be difficult for me not to make a piece of work that has something that it wants to say. And that's also yeah. why it's so funny that I'm doing advertising and commercials because it's, mm -hmm. It's difficult to it's uh, to to get uh, your message in there sometimes. And and your specific message as a director, you mean, right? Yeah. Like, because because you're you're talking about somebody else's message when you're doing advertising, and but it is clear that uh, you have a voice. You know, whether you're doing IKEA or Pandora or or you know, it, it's it, it's your voice, and it's. It goes into that vicious circle, right? You get called because you have that look, and you have that look because you continue doing it because that's how you feel. You know, that's your that's that's your language, yeah. um, director, which is interesting to me because um, you you have it in you. You know, when I looked at when I watched Period uh, the first time, I was completely floored by it, right? Because it was clearly a different way of telling that same thing. And it was very courageous. It was clearly told by a woman, right? Yeah. Which brings me to a question which is very trendy right now. And I don't want to get into it too much. But do you think, do you like being called a woman director, a female director? Do you like being niched not only by your look as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. but also being called a female director which brings me to the next question do you think female directors have a certain type of way of being female directors can a, can a female director do a car commercial is the great big question well, that everybody asks right yeah because we grew up in a in a in a, in a culture where you give your little boy a little car and you give a little girl a little doll and and she's wearing pink and he's wearing blue and and I wholeheartedly hate it, hate that right mm -hmm. so but my question is is there a female director world and a male director world or do you want to break that do you think you can break that not you specifically alone because <laughs> I wouldn't put it on your shoulders but <laughs> no no I well that's it's that's a big question and a lot of questions. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, my, I mean, no, and I mean, yes. So it's like, it was fun when you say, can a, a female direct a car commercial? Because yeah. interestingly enough, a man can direct, a, you know, a hygiene a product commercial. commercial for a perfume. woman or perfume. can direct a perfume commercial, which is for women. They can, you know, and that's never been a, a, a quick never, thing. never been an issue, right? No. Right. Yeah. Um, I, it's I'm, I've been thinking a lot about this lately because I've been thinking about like trying to create images in my head of, which is like maybe leaning towards called female um, experiences or uh, 
like female um, topics and I feel yeah. like I haven't seen these pictures I need to I need to create them in my own head because I never have seen these pictures uh, talking about let's say menopause a, a, yeah. a woman in her menopause I don't know how it looks like because I've never seen right. it so right. I think there's a huge potential to tell all these more female stories that has yes. been told and I hope yes. that we would lean towards the people who has actually experienced these things to tell it because I, yeah. I think and I think there's a huge gap where we could fill it out with stories that we haven't seen and that's also talking about other types of backgrounds other types of colors and cultures that we haven't seen that much lately or not lately yeah. ever so I ever so <laughs> and I feel like yeah. uh, so if it's a female voice that's different from a male voice I, I don't know but I feel like there's some voices that uh, haven't been heard that much that will be really interesting to see more from well, I wanted you to get there because I think it's a, it's a it's I mean I'm I'm going to get away from from topics that are so serious because we could talk about it for hours I think but Yeah yeah uh, um, but but it's interesting to me that I, I also believe in the pendulum effect right for many years the pendulum was on, on the on the side of as you said right men would do tampax commercials and would do pampers commercials and would do you know female hygiene commercials and nobody would say anything and now everybody's like oh well you know i don't know if a woman can do a car commercial i don't i don't think it's true personally right i think though that it's about talent i've always believed that I think that things like this are about talent. And if you have the talent to do something, and if I have somebody that has the courage to have you do something that you want to feel like you, you have the talent to do, then that's the world that works the best, right? The world of the producer that finds you the job and you that are right for that job and you're intelligent enough to say, I can actually do that, as opposed to, I, I think I'm gonna get stuck and mm -hmm. not be able to do it, right? So I think it's it's very it's an interesting moment, and I think the pendulum will actually move to the opposite direction before it comes to the middle, which is where it should be, right? So I think we are in a world where you, as a director, will start doing things that feel right for you, and you need to know what your boundaries are as a director, and, and it feels like you actually do know what your boundaries are. I know what your boundaries are, and we met 18 minutes ago, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so. Um, that that to me is very interesting, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna diffuse this topic for okay, a second. Okay, yeah, <laughs> to definitely keep on going, but uh, we'll no, take that no, another time. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna diffuse it okay. because I, I don't want to get um, profound in in any way. I know, but I'm gonna ask you about period, which yes. is still in the topic, but about it's about something that you know. How did you get there? Uh, as in. Um, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not going to ask you about the visual language because it's yours, but it's like it's it's an incredibly interesting topic that came in an incredibly interesting moment. So um, nobody felt. I mean, I, I think if you had if you had done it five years before, it would have probably been like censored, but <laughs> <laughs> somehow. But it, it's so delicate in its strength that just tell me how it came to be yeah well uh it's actually my first film so yeah. that's kind of yeah, that... what set it all off which is maybe why it also became what it was because i was uh, like just diving into it without yeah. having any expectations or ideas of what it should be yeah and funny enough it was a comment to the whole advertising uh, industry working around this topic yep because for me, uh, as a kid, it was one of the most like traumatic experiences I had when I yeah. got my first period. I was yeah. like, I thought it's game over. It's <laughs> like now it's uh, I'm broken. Now you need to deal with all these new yes things, and you can't be that kid you were before. And I thought it was something you needed to hide. It was something. It was a taboo, mm -hmm. and I think it had a lot to do with what you saw in commercials. You saw women running in flower fields in white dresses and it said had all these words of secret and smells yep. of flowers and yep. they had the blue liquid, you know. Yep. Yeah. And so I just 
I wanted to do something where I tried to comment on it, but also just try to put some images on it where I could feel more uh, curious about it or yeah. empowered by it or just like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, ha I hadn't seen it anywhere. I hadn't seen a film where you actually saw it. I've, I've never seen it. It's always been this secret thing for me. So I just wanted to take something that felt super awkward for me. I never thought I should sit here and talk with someone I didn't know about periods. But <laughs> now, two years later, it's like uh, it what? really helped me uh, develop but my language. Last year, was, last year was a year of Viva la Vulva, right? And then, and you came way before it. You came a, a year before that. So. Yeah. It was a it was a breakthrough year or couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, and I think again rightfully so because there was really nothing wrong about it, right? And again, you, we 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 as as men who didn't even have to go through it grew up with like you know blue liquid and and you know you work in advertising you're like why is it blue and then you understand right it's like we're not stupid I'm just like. But I read somewhere that eight out of ten men in I think it was India they think that period blood is actually blue. blue. <laughs> that's great. And that's that's, that's, that's horrible. That's yeah. great. <laughs> it's, it's it's that's what that's what is given to us. That's that's what you know, you know, I have a 15 year old daughter, and you know, we we live we live it the way you actually told it. Yeah. Right? It's, it's like that's what's interesting to me. It's like it's breaking a taboo is also about the courage of you talking about it in a certain way. Because I think the language that you use is important as much as the topic that you write. The topic, because I, I, I said before, there's a courage in it mm -hmm. that is huge as your first film. Thank you. Right? Huge, huge, huge. Because it's your first film and then you do it, uh, you kind of shop it around and you send it to the YDA, right? Yeah. And what happens? <laughs> and first of all, wh why the YDA? And you probably, it was probably Martin uh, Werner who you actually worked with. Yeah, yeah. I was assisting Martin Werner at the time. Yep. And yep. I'd been working for him for one and a half year, just tra traveling all over and doing location scouting and treatments yep. and casting and stuff like that. Yep. And then I just, felt the need, I had been assisting a lot of people, both in fine arts and film and all these things. And I was just like, now I needed to do my own thing. So I yeah. did, did this period film and just very briefly, it was done like on a few weekends and it's my friends, it's my sister. It's like a, a very rock and roll project yeah. and we had no money as it all, as it is. <laughs> and um, then my EP at, at Bacon, Mitte and Martin, they, they sent it in to YDA. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know anything about YDA really, and I've never been to um, to Cannes. But well, well, at least not for the for the advertising not the festival. festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they send it in, and uh, we were going there. The whole like a whole group of directors and producers from from Denmark and met us. My EP, she was in the, the jury that year, and she called me in the airport, and she was like, "Ah, not to." Uh, make you uh, not, not to disappoint you but just know that there was a really there was a lot of great work this year so don't have your hopes too high yeah so i was yeah. like okay well I'm just glad that i was shortlisted in a way yeah. i feel like that i didn't expect anything yeah so we went there and we were at the award show and we had a big lunch before and i allowed myself to just have a few glass of wine because I was like, I'm not gonna go on that stage in <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so when they yeah said the film had won, I was just yeah. like, I my remember. knees were trembling and I, I, didn't, I didn't get it at all. But I, um, I was, it was, was a great experience, I really fun. There. I was there when they called your name up and you walked up on stage and you were literally trembling because you were like yeah. super nervous and surprised at the same super time. Super nervous, super surprised <laughs> and just like, yeah. I feel like it's such a like I like I was sitting at the kids' table and you were allowed to go to the grown-up yeah, table, grown table and afterwards all these producers who who went up and were like so what's your next step and what's up and blah 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 and I was just like what do they even mean about next step? <laughs> I, I just, so I, it was quite overwhelming. I, this is my first film, <laughs> you know. To me, that is incredible about the YDA, right? It's like yeah. that's the first film you send it over. You have put all your love into it, you know, 
you said it, ha it didn't have money, but money, when, when something is good and has talent in it, you don't see the money in it. No. You don't see the little money or the lot of money. You see the talent, right? So it kind of get cru it gets crushed whether you have a lot of budget or a little budget. It's just good or bad, right? Yeah. So, so it was clearly full of talent. And, and so when it won, you walk up on stage and, and you're like super nervous. And I think you walked a couple of times. I don't know. I don't know how many times. But anyway, but when you, when you walk up on stage, you, you, win, you win the award. And then at a certain point, you are a director. You're not somebody's assistant anymore. You know, you're like it. It's yeah. like at a certain point, you actually become some somebody. Right, yeah. because people are, look, are giving their cards to you, and everybody from all over the world mm -hmm. wants to know what you're doing and where you're from and what. No, no, no. Did that? Was that really a trampoline for you? Uh, for your business, for your business as a director, yeah. for your future yeah. as a director. Definitely, it, yeah. Yeah. I think it gave me the courage to. Oh, it did give me the courage uh, to say, okay, I don't. Actually, have to assist someone. I can I can focus on my own work. I, yep. And as I was saying about like not really believing that I could get into film school when I was nineteen or like that I had anything to do stuff. I felt like I've I've always had this idea. I'm just like a white privileged girl who's like the worst thing that happened was my parents got a divorce. You know, I feel yep. like what stories do I have to bring to the table? Yeah, which is stupid because. There's yeah. yeah, a lot of people who look like me, and they also need stories, I guess, who exactly. kind of look like them. So, but so it was really nice to get that um, recognition. That recognition, and people believe that I also had a voice that would be interesting to listen to. Yep, and 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 now that, I mean, you 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 are a director that has more than one film and and a lot of really good work. Uh, do do you do you you know what what is next for you but really what is next like is there something that you're looking forward to like a short film a long format a scripted thing do you like to write your own? <laughs> <laughs> everything that that allows me to say something yeah it, it, no it, I, I i mean but, i never I never dreamt of becoming like a, a commercial director, like, uh, and and I've been very fortunate to have work in that uh, in that field for the last two years, and it's given me a lot of experiences, and I met uh, so many great people, and it's 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 really been great. But I also miss having more time to uh, to really like dive into the characters and the stories, and to yeah. yeah. Yeah, I miss having time. I miss being able to to develop stories that can tell a little bit more. You miss, like, having, you miss having time, meaning the time to tell the story, right? Like the length, right? The length. Yeah, I miss having, and also just just like the when you do commercials, it's so fast. Turnover is always really really fast, and you need to just like make fast decisions and just yeah. like stick to that. And there's not really that much time to really dive into yep. things, yep. which is something I've always done a lot, like studying architecture. You use six months on one project, and here you use maybe a month if you're lucky. So, yeah. so nowadays, yeah, it's like so. So your goal is to actually do longer formats or scripted formats or 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 things that allow you to actually have more time to develop things. So you, you your goal is to tell more stories. To have more time to actually tell stories to use your, your words <laughs> yeah i i guess so that's that's the way to put it and do you think do you think it is do you do you understand that it's actually a right time to actually do that because i'm going to tell you it's the right time to do that right it's the for me or just in general in general i mean i think this is this is the right time to skip because i think Production companies are starting to do different types of formats, and and directors are starting to try out things. Uh, even brands are starting to do things that are longer, mm -hmm. uh, putting their names onto things that are longer. And I think that is interesting because it is a very interesting time to be a director today. Yeah, and to bring your talent to the table mm -hmm. uh, today. So I think you actually uh, are there for the. For the long run, 
I and I hope you you will do what you can do I think you know because honestly I think there's no better time to be a director especially because you're backed by a really great company in a moment in which you can actually do formats that might be a TV series um, right so yeah it, because the thing the thing that is interesting to me is that you um, you are much more of a storyteller than than a lot of people actually give you credit for because the fil the, the commercial films that you've done have a lot of stories in them like the way you cast the people that you cast and the the stories that are given to you to direct are very story filled as much as they might feel some might feel vignette quote unquote yeah <laughs> you have a talent in making all those people all those vignettes very strong and i think that's a very good talent that you have thank you so much uh, no I'm, I'm saying it seriously because it is rare to have that and you could see it even in period right period was very strong but it was very delicate and it was incredible you know and and the funny thing about period is we actually planned it to be much longer but uh, i have so much material i interviewed women for like two days and we have like a three days we have like 40 hours of interview of just women talking about these things but then the yda had a deadline so that's why yeah. it also was like yeah. short and sweet which i think is great because it's, it's much better it's much I mean, better I, yeah. then people I, don't lose their interest or start getting bored hearing about the cyclists yeah. and yeah well, I mean, that it's much better like that. I mean, I didn't know that you had a longer version of it, and I think it's. No, really I, don't, I don't have it. I didn't make the. I mean, that, that you thought of having it be a longer version. I think yeah. it is. It is. I mean, that, that's why it, it was so successful because I think it was strong because it was short and sweet, right? Um, yeah. So, that said, um, unless you have any questions for me. <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think I think. Why, why I think didn't you become a director? Why did you pick producing? I didn't become a director because, uh, because I. Because when I started becoming a producer as an assistant producer, um, I started looking at reels, and the reels that I loved of the directors that I loved, were reels that made me realize that I could never be the director, that I loved. I realized that I could never. Uh, become the director that I wanted to be that I didn't have the talent that I didn't have the talent talent to be an amazing director which is what I wanted to be mm -hmm. but I would have been a very good medium director a medium was not something that I wanted to go for I don't want to go for medium in general so I just thought that the directors that I loved were doing things that were so amazing and they had a look that was so amazing and they were making me feel things that were so amazing that I thought, you know, maybe I'll just be the one that will find them and nurture them and grow them and do great work with them. You know, I, yeah. I think there's a there's a talent and a creativity inside producing. Definitely. Huge, huge. Definitely. Not a lot of people understand that in some other areas but so i actually like that i mean mm -hmm. you know i i like the fact that i i can be close to talent that i really like to have involved in the jobs that we do mm -hmm. uh, and i think there's an intuition in finding that talent and growing that talent and, and nurturing talent and so that's yeah. the reason why that's the reason why i didn't want to be a medium director <laughs> I'm sure you would have been an amazing director. No, no, no. Thank, thank, no. thank you for that. <laughs> well, but I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't regret it. No, because I, I, tried, I also tried to do it, and and I was fine, and I liked it, and I loved the pressure of it, mm -hmm. which is something you that, that you love the pressure. Wow. I love the pressure. I, I, I think pressure is something that creates chaos and i have a friend who's actually in the jury this year also mm -hmm. who lives in the, on the theory of chaos he believes in the fact that chaos creates creati creativity so so even when you work with him he has a moment when everything is flat and he creates chaos so that you create waves because waves are the ones that you ride and not and you don't you don't ride waves when it's flat because there are no waves so 
Wow. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of what we we you know what we like. I mean, we like the pressure, and I think directors need to like the pressure, and we need to teach them pressure how to deal with it. You know, when we work with them, yeah. do you like it? No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't think I like it. I mean, I you, you know, you always have it, right? What sorry? You will always have pressure. Yeah, I guess I, I yeah. Well, I don't hate. I, I, I guess maybe I don't even recognize it. Maybe it's just a big part of what you're doing. I think yeah. it's like a, I think you're your own worst enemy when you're yeah. when you're directing. I think it's more about like having to always believe in yourself, believe in your decisions, because people always come to you and ask. Absolutely. You know, and you always need to have answers for everything, which can be difficult if you don't yeah. always think you have the right answers. Yep. And but you have to give an answer. What, sorry? But, but yeah, you have to give an answer. But that's answer. why you need to team up with amazing people who can help you find the answers because yeah. no one has answers for everything. And Absolutely. I think you you will fail if you think that you have the answer for everything. I agree. Because I agree. That's very lonely. I agree. But but I think also by being the captain of the ship, you know, with your producer, but regardless, you are the captain of the ship. You're captain of the set. Mm -hmm. You need to prove to everybody that you are the captain because as soon as you don't prove it then people might you might leak you might seep into yeah. everybody else the consciousness that you're not capable but even if you are capable right so i think it's a very very stressful moment but i think it's very interesting because that's what creates interesting things mm -hmm. you know yeah because, because it, it it you know it feels like you know you're somebody that uh, you were nervous about this this chat, and I hope it wasn't that nerve wracking for you. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was perfectly fine. <laughs> um, but but I think it is interesting because you are much stronger um, in your in in. Uh, you are very strong as a director. You know, like the, the the words that you used about yourself, and and sometimes not being 100% sure are not what you show when you film. So you, you're a very strong visual director, which is amazing. You know, like it, your visuals are very, very strong and, and have a point of view. And that is very rare. It's very rare that you can put your point of view in different things. And, and that is, I think, if I were to go back in the, in the chat, is also because your parents taught you certain things. It yeah. is because of the Truffauts and the Godards and the Hitchcocks and the Ingmar Bergmans and of the world, right? So mm -hmm. it is incredibly interesting to me that, you know, it's uh, it's part of you, you know, and the way you, you say things and you tell things when you're filming things, you know? Yeah. No. And that, with that with that compliment... Okay, yeah, I'm all flattering. <laughs> With that real sincere compliment, and I'm serious, uh, yeah. I can't thank you enough for doing this, Emily. Yeah. And I, you, you were great. Um, <laughs> well, <as> I, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, it is just there's a reason for why you choose to be behind the camera. You know, my sister, my sister was an actor, and I was like, I'm going to to do this interview, and she was just like, That's so fun! I'll do it for you, no problem. <laughs> you so I'm actually not immediate. I'm her sister, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I didn't. I did it. Okay, Emily. Thank you very much thank for you. this chat, and uh, hope to see you live one day. And um, that. have fun in your in your uh, wherever outside summer home wherever you are. And yeah, it's not. This is not my home for the I, record. This, this is, is not, uh, more like a grand grandmother's yeah, home. This is, this is not <laughs> this is not my home either. It's somebody else's home actually. Um, I'm in the mountains in in friends' houses. So this That's chat right. was. Both both of us are in are in displaced. So yeah. again, Very thank important. you very much for doing this. Thank uh, you very much. All the best in the world and talk the, to you soon. Yes, definitely. Bye. Ciao ciao.